Morena. Welcome back to your drums. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You, episode one, music class. My name's Tom, and today we're gonna to show you how to build your own drum kit using just rubbish. Let's go and see what we can find. Seatbelt. Right, let's go and see if we can find anything in the bin over there. Alright, a lot of stuff in here. Uh, oh, we can probably use these. Turn that upside down. A couple of drums there. Go towards our kit. Okay, Let's see what we can find in here. There you go, there's a bucket. We can use that. Take it out. It's great. All right, let's see what we can find in here. Ah, I can already see there's a big metal bin there. That'll be great. Can use that. Awesome. So if you guys look around your community, you can find anything like this, you know, reusing stuff, recycling things that have been thrown away or things that aren't used anymore. I mean, this could be used. You could put that towards the drum kit. Anything else in here? Nah, I don't think so. Right. Let's take everything back to the music room and set it up. All of our parts now. Now, for those of you who don't have drums at home, you won't have one of these, which is called a kick pedal, which is the one you use your foot on. But for today, we're just gonna use this one from the school drum kit. And next lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to build one of these out of rubbish, like cardboard, pencils, I'll show you next time. But for now, we're gonna use this one. So, the big metal bin that I found, we're gonna use this as our kick drum. So I'll just attach the pedal there. And now, that sounds a bit, doesn't sound too great, does it? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some blankets and jumpers and things inside there, just to make it sound a bit better. A lot of drum players, they grab blankets and old clothes and things like that to stick in the, in the kick drum so it doesn't sound ugly, so it sounds better. So we'll do that today. You see the difference? Sounds pretty ugly, eh? So chuck these in, like an old jumper, an old blanket. Okay. Shove that in there and see the difference. You hear that? It's a lot better. So we've got everything set up here, but as you can see, we have a little problem. So this is moving, moving around everywhere, jumping about when you hit it. Just falls off. So what you're going to need is some, either some sticky tape, which is what I've got here, 
or maybe some string. Get a long bit of string and tie it round. So what we'll do, we'll just use some tape today. Okay, so all the different parts that we have. That one there is the hi-hat. That one there is the snare drum. That one there is the tom. So remember that's my name. This one here, that's the kick drum. And this one down here, that's the floor tom. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Right, that's it for today guys thanks for watching next time remember to tune in and i'm going to teach you how to make your own kick pedal and where to find some drumsticks thanks a lot bye which means you, you, and you. See, See you, you next time. Hey, Mr. T, I just got a email through from the health class from Mr. Zaina and Mr. Liko that Buddy's out of class. Can you see if you can locate him, please? Yes, hi there. Hi, my name is Miss Robin. I'm the coordinator of support services here at Urara. Uh, our main focus here, or one of our main focuses, is to keep students learning. Hey, Buddy just went upstairs. Hi, I'm Mr. T. I'm the student engagement officer here at Urara, and another focus of our team is engaging with our students and building positive relationships. Hi, I'm Ms. Renee and I'm the Student Wellbeing Officer. Um, here in Student Support, we also focus on your mental, physical, emotional and social wellbeing. So over the next 10 weeks, Student Support will be introducing the different organisations that we utilise to support you in your learning. Hey buddy! Hey buddy, you made it. Come and take a seat. Hi there. I'm Mr. Zane and I'm your health and PE teacher at Yarrow College. Hey everyone, my name is Mr. Liko Alosio and I'll be your health and wellbeing teacher here at Yarrow College. Our main topic for this term is looking at choices and how this will improve your personal wellbeing. Zane, what does wellbeing mean? Well, Mr. Liko, wellbeing is something we all have and by looking after our wellbeing, we are taking care of our health to help us make good choices. Here are some examples of well-being we will cover this class. Social well-being. Physical well-being. Mental well-being. And emotional well-being. Yes! As we journey through this term, we'll be looking at things like good and bad influences, how our choices we make at school and in community impact our personal well-being. You will get the chance to take action and work together with us to improve your well-being for the better.
We look forward to seeing you all very soon. But for now, stay safe, enjoy being home with your families, and most importantly, make, make good, good choices. choices. Welcome back to Female Body in Turn 2. Because everyone's keeping safe and looking after each other back at the community. This term, we'll be covering a few things on life skills. Stay safe, everyone. We miss you. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye! Bye! This is Miss Deb. Welcome to our online Urara Literacy Program. Hi everyone, Miss Flea. I'm back. Hi everyone, this is Miss Andrea. I look forward to doing some literacy online with you. Hi, it's Miss Emily. And Miss Katie. Each week we will look at wow words. Words of the week. Firstly, let's break this up. First, Lee. Secondly, let's break this up. Second, Lee. Next, remember the vowel sound. E is for egg. Then, the vowel sound is the same. E is for egg. Lastly. Last. Lee. Here we will use an example of washing your hands to show you how to use these words in a procedure. Firstly, we turn on the tap and wet our hands under the water. Secondly, we get some soap. Next, we rub our hands together for at least 20 seconds, making sure to get the soap all over. Then we rinse off the soap under the water. Lastly, we dry our hands with a paper towel. Don't forget to put your rubbish in the bin. Good morning, all you lovely people out there. If you remember yesterday's video, we were talking about all the different ways we can write things. And today, we are going to write all about how we do things. And the word we normally use is called procedural writing. Now, yes, that is a big word, but it simply means how to do things. How do we spell this word? Let's have a look at it. It says procedural. I'm going to put it up so you can have a look at it. There it is. Procedural. Procedural writing. Now, you heard Miss Katie talk about our wow words. And our wow words were, firstly, Secondly, next, then, and lastly. Those were the words we used. Let's see how we use it in everyday life. Washing hands. Now, Miss Katie and Miss Emily did a wonderful job recording how to wash hands. But let's see how we put it using our wow words and using some pictures. So, what did they do first? They wet their hands, rinse their hands with water, just to get it all nice and wet. What did they do secondly? Secondly, they added a whole lot of soap. Remember, the more soap, the more bubbles, the better. Next. You have to rub your hands together. You have to rub your hands together. 
and making sure that every part of your hand is clean. Then you rinse your hands and very importantly, after you rinse your hand, turn off the tap. Let's not waste water, young people. Let's not waste our water. Lastly, what did they do last? They dried their hands and we put the paper towels in the bin. Let's recap. Firstly, rinse hands with water. Secondly, apply a whole lot of soap. Next, rubbing our hands together. Then, rinse the soap Turn off the tap. Lastly, we dry our hand and we put the paper in the bin. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. You are a mob. My chance for you beat my record of six keep up just using a roll of toilet paper hope you're staying safe on community from the street soccer family It's Tuesday the 21st of April 2020. Someone comes to the shop and they want to buy some eggs. Unfortunately, the shop owner says the eggs are only arriving next Sunday on the 27th of April. The person goes back home to wait. Now, instead of checking his calendar and checking how many days there are from the 21st to the 27th, they decide the next day that they've waited long enough and go back to the shop. They come to the shop owner and ask him for some eggs. A little bit frustrated, he repeats himself and says they're only coming on the 27th of April. The person goes home disappointed. This week in Words of the Week, we're looking at the language of calendars. Now, Calendars are things that help us keep track of time in our year. Can you spell the word calendar with me? C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R, calendar. Next word is months. There are 12 months in our year. Can you help me spell the word months together? M-O-N-T-H-S, months. The next word of the week we're looking at is the word Fortnite. When we use the word Fortnite, we're not talking about the video game, but instead it means that two weeks have passed or 14 days have gone by. Can you spell the word Fortnite with me? F-O-R-T-N-I-G-H-T, Fortnite. Hello again, my name's Miss Rebecca. We've now been learning about breeding calendars and what calendars have on them. Do you remember some of the important information we can find on a calendar? I'll give you a bit of a hint. There are 12 special things a calendar shows us. 12 months, perfect. Then it also shows us special numbers in each month. Yeah, you're right. It shows us how many days each month has. And last bit of information is it shows us seven special things. Perfect the seven days of the week. But now Good today, job. we're gonna look at how we can find important information by knowing how to read our calendars. Now, as you can see on our calendar page of April, April has 30 days in it. Now, for example, if you're working a job and your boss says that you need to come into work on the 28th of April, how would you know when that is? Simple, I'll show you how. We'll take a look at our month of April and we'll see these numbers that are on every day and we'll look for the number 28. 
Now, if we look at our calendar, the number 28 is here, the last Tuesday of the month. And that's how you'll know. So if your boss says come in on the 29th of April, again, we can look at our calendar and we find where's number 29. 29 is the Wednesday, the next day. And that is how a calendar can help you know the time and help you get to work on the right days. Now, another very important way that a calendar can help you is it can help keep on track when you're going to get paid. For example, if your boss says he will pay you every fortnight. Now, do you remember what a fortnight is? Our words of the week, it told us that a fortnight is two weeks or 14 days from the day you're talking about. So if he said that he's going to pay you a fortnight from April 14th, let's take a look at our calendar. So where's April 14th? The Tuesday right here. Now, there are two ways we can do it. We can count 14 days, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which will be the 28th of April. An easier way is we started our 14 and we just moved two days down. Our two weeks. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your house.